no voy a permitir grupos armados de ningún tipo en Honduras. With that, the president of Honduras, Pepe Lobo, moved at least 2,000 soldiers into the region of the Bahawaguan, a biofuel farming zone in northern Honduras where 3,500 campesinos, organized as the Unified Campesino Movement of Awan, or MUCA, have occupied a series of African palm plantations in a demand for land reform. President Lobo, who remains unrecognized by most South American governments and large sectors inside Honduras, made those comments and the ensuing military deployment at the same time that he was re-entering negotiations with the Campesino Group. The negotiations ended in a tentative agreement for the government to buy 11,000 hectares of land from the three businessmen who control the area and mortgage it to the Campesinos at low interest. When I visited the plantations in mid-December, the movement was just in the beginning stages of the occupation. Following this week's negotiations, I spoke to one of MUCA's leaders, he asked to remain anonymous for security reasons. No era lo que nosotros queríamos, pero estamos negociando con una M60 en la cabeza, donde ellos en cada dos kilómetros hay retenes en las aldeas, tienen a las personas ahí en la finca rodeados por todos lados. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a negociar así? In the months leading up to the negotiations, Honduras' mainstream media, all owned by supporters of the coup, routinely speculated that the landless farmers were actually foreign-financed guerrillas. The country's largest newspaper chain even launched a dedicated website titled Terror in the Iguan Valley. Un informe de inteligencia militar en poder de la prensa dice que una célula guerrillera se está armando en el Bajo Aguán. Los grupos que mantienen tomadas las 13 fincas supuestamente reciben apoyo de movimientos de izquierda, entrenamiento de la guerrilla colombiana y financiamiento estratégico del narcotráfico. None of these reports ever provided evidence of their claims. Que nosotros somos gente de paz y que solo estamos reclamando nuestros derechos y estamos reclamando con las manos caídas porque nosotros no somos de armas. La arma de nosotros es una dignidad que la llevamos en el corazón. La tierra pertenece a nosotros los campesinos porque yo de ser campesina ni hoy ni nunca me arrepiento. Yo le pido a las a las fuerzas civiles y militares de nuestro país que por favor no nos vayan a provocar a, a una catástrofe humana. But the president himself helped feed the misinformation campaign. No voy a permitir grupos armados de ningún tipo en Honduras. Y lo quiero repetir aquí. No voy a permitir grupos armados en Honduras. Since I left in December, six members of MUCA have been murdered. The campesinos blame the killing on hired death squads. Los derechos humanos, ni la fiscalía, ni la policía nunca ha dicho, hey, lo vamos a revisar. Nosotros hemos exigido que los vayan a recoger los muertos, que lleven un forense. Nunca hemos sido escuchados. One local journalist who broke with the mainstream and covered the situation as a land conflict, as opposed to a national security threat, was Naum Palacios. He was shot dead on March 15th. Es verdad, él estuvo en las fincas, estuvo con nosotros. Cuando la guerra mediática de la prensa decía la prensa que aquí había narcotraficantes, que aquí habían este, nicaragüenses, venezolanos del Alfar y que células guerrilleras. Él entrevistó a las personas, tomó las casitas donde vivíamos, en las casitas de cartón. El único que nosotros los apoyaba aquí en la zona del Bajo Juan era Naum Palacio. Rosemary Joyce, an anthropologist at University of California, Berkeley, with more than 30 years' experience in Honduras, has been tracking the media coverage on her blog, Honduras Culture and Politics. So what the press does is it tries to subtly portray the uh, peasants of the Bajo Aguan as potentially terrorists, potentially funded by South American terrorists, potentially armed, potentially not Honduran, potentially Nicaraguan or other um, foreigners who are 
in stirring things up. And they repeat rumors, um, claims that there are external forces that are coming in and advising these campesinos to continue their, their fight against the government. Lobo Sosa's own statements have been that there are other political interests at work here, that this isn't really a land dispute, that there are forces behind the peasants. The government suggested that if the campesinos did not agree to their offer, the rejection would confirm that the campesinos were not interested in land at all, but were trying to destabilize the government. There's always this idea that the peasants are somehow weak and, and vulnerable and can be manipulated, and that those forces behind the peasants are interested in embarrassing his government in the international community by portraying it as bad on human rights. The country's business elite called for immediate intervention. Apliquemos la ley, mantengamos el orden público, el orden y la seguridad jurídica en el país, si no la situación se va a agravar y vamos a tener consecuencias muy negativas. Miguel Facruse, one of the country's richest people, a key supporter of the coup and owner of most of the disputed land in the Bajoaguan region, brought his employees to the doors of the parliament to demand intervention. Ahí, ahí se está creando una insurrección. Yo no creo que solo es del pueblo mismo, sino que le están metiendo candela de afuera. Yo creo que Honduras tiene la manera, tiene la policía y tiene el ejército para calmar, parar esos daños. Elements of the armed forces moved into the Bajo Agua. And the first press reports, which have been yanked off the Honduran websites now, so you can't read them anymore, uh, actually quoted people in the Bajo Aguan region as being um, fearful that there was a massacre about to happen. Since then, there's been a backpedaling and a claim that this deployment of the military to the Bajo Aguan, 2,000 or more troops, again, against 3,500 unarmed peasants, was not in fact in any way related to the actual dispute with the campesinos. Instead, the claim is that these troops are there to make the region safe against drug trafficking and general criminality. That kind of a claim is a way for the local social government to say, we're not trying to intimidate anybody, but the peasants who are trying to hold on to their, their position uh, are quite rightly afraid that the kinds of military repression that marked the months since the coup could happen against them. Nosotros lo pedimos ahorita que se vayan ya los militares y están haciendo lo mismo que el golpe de Estado. Y entonces ellos dicen que no, que hasta después que nosotros firmemos. The international press, in English in particular, simply hasn't covered it. It just is invisible. It's only begun appearing in the English language press following an AP report written by a stringer in Tegucigalpa that was retailing the Lobo Sosa government's claim that it's moving ahead with an anti-crime campaign in which the military are being enlisted in support of interdiction of drug violence. That report was reprinted in dozens of English language outlets. For many of those publications, it was the first report on Honduras in weeks. With the agreement ratified, the military has shown no sign of leaving the region. In part two, we look at the roots of the conflict in the Aguan Valley.